Dobry wieczór wszystkim. How are you guys doing? I hope you're all doing fantastic today. I'm Mystical and I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. We have quite a bit to jump into, so let's get right into the video. First thing that we have on our plate today is the V65 update. Yes, this is already out. We were just in last video talking about V64 still, and now V65 is coming out. Basti actually already has it in their archive, which is absolutely fantastic. Much love, Basti. So in case you guys want to update using that, video is right up here. Do keep in mind, this is the PTC version of the update, meaning it's the public test channel. So, you know, install it at your own risk. There is probably going to be bugs. However, now let me tell you a little bit more about that V65 update. According to Luna on Twitter, a lot more airplane slash travel mode strings have been found in V65. Now, I'm not going to read all of these out to you since as you can see on the screen above me right now, there's tons of them. In case you don't know what this is, airplane and travel mode are essentially what are going to allow you to use your quest in, well, places where you travel. So for example, airplanes, cars, don't use it on bikes. <laughs> Essentially anywhere that you are moving in and the headset is supposed to stay stationary because if you tried to use it inside a car or something right now, what you'd notice is the window either floats away from you or moves side to side. It's pretty much impossible to use the thing to watch movies or anything of sorts without tilting your head every few seconds. That is supposed to be fixed with airplane and travel mode. We also have an early Nux render to introduce flight mode that Luna has apparently found in MetaQuest OS V65, so you can see here it's just a render, just, you know, for those that are interested. It won't tell you much, but just pretty interesting. I find it even more interesting to be honest, that the headset is white. Why would the headset be white? And why would it not be like a Quest 3? And the Quest Pro is black, so this doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe it's just missing assets. Also, another thing found by Luna on Twitter, the MetaQuest OS V65 PTC finally puts your system passcode screen in pass-through. I believe this is Meta continuing to update their AR mode and essentially allowing more and more things to happen inside that AR mode. We know how serious Meta is about augmented reality, especially on the Quest 3. Hopefully this is also part of that new UI upgrade, you know, as I said, allowing more and more things to happen in that augmented reality mode, hopefully allowing us to place augments and things all around the room, just makes the entire thing feel a little bit more whole. You know, you're not putting in your passcode in a virtual space and then magically after you do that, you're being thrown into your augmented reality space. It feels a little bit more polished now. Continuing on, we've got information on Quest's new UI. However, this one we don't have any sources for, uh, except Luna. So, you know, I trust Luna a lot. We get a lot of news from her, but there is no uh, direct source because apparently Luna thinks she, she isn't supposed to have this, which is, I mean, a fair point. I am not sourcing this because I probably wasn't supposed to see it, lol. But one way Meta may be looking to improve Quest Quest OS UI is by making panel elements more verbose and or 3D. So looking at this image here, you can see that they seem to kind of pop out a little bit more and perhaps they're going to have some sort of, you know, when you look around, you'll see the buttons floating on top of the UI and moving through space. That would be pretty cool, to be honest. And we already talked about it probably being half opaque, half not. So you'll be able to see through it, possibly like a glass look to it, which would look really, really nice. I wonder what kind of toll that will take on processing power, though. And then Luna underneath that said, this is a very low res, but it looks like they have have transparency here too. So as you can see, this may or may not be the kind of glassy look that I was talking about. I would personally prefer it to be a lot more glass rather than whatever the hell is happening here. This just looks like they turned the opacity slider down, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer it to either be blurred or glassy again. If something is just opaque, I find it distracting, especially if you have text or something on top of that on buttons. Not sure why it doesn't feel as premium as if the entire thing was glass. Would love to hear your opinions on that down below though. Also would love to hear your opinions on this uh, menu screen because personally I don't actually know how much of a fan of this I am. I'm gonna be honest with you. The buttons they seem less modern to me. I don't know why. It kind of reminds me of like this really old iOS look for some reason or maybe they're finally adding themes to the UI. How cool would that be? Allowing us to change you know our button themes and everything. More strings referencing in the ability to use generative AI for custom skybox view have appeared in MetaQuest v65. So in case 
you don't know, the skybox is the image that appears behind you inside your home space when you're in virtual reality. You can actually install a custom skybox right now using your own image or choosing from one of Meta's images. However, Meta is also apparently going to introduce a generative AI to let you generate images with AI. So you'll be able to type something in, the AI will generate that image, and that will be your skybox. Pretty cool. I mean, we're already able to do something like this, just using AI on a computer or a phone and then transferring that image to the Quest. But of course, having everything done on Quest will just make it a lot more seamless and faster for the end user. So pretty cool. Honestly, I'd probably use this a few times, even though I spend most of my time now in augmented reality. MetaQuest Browser has received an update, apparently making it more stable and faster. From Luna, MetaQuest Browser got a sizable performance boost in version 32.3, and a PDF reader is finally being added though as an experimental extension. Yeah, because the browser actually received extensions a little while back, and the first one was LastPass. Now, apparently, this may be a PDF reader, which is great. I mean, I sideloaded a PDF reader onto my quest, but again, having one built in, more seamless, faster, better for the end user, blah, 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 you know. Less sideloading we have to do, the better, I guess. Oh, here is a big one in case you guys still have a Quest 2, or just planning to buy a Quest 2 because it's cheaper. Accessory prices have been cut by more than 50%, including the official strap and carrying case. So great time to be buying accessories for the Quest 2 right now. Meta significantly cut the prices of official Quest 2 accessories. The new Quest 2 official accessory pricing is the Elite Strap, $25. It used to be $60, that's crazy. Elite Strap with battery, $45. Originally, $120. I bought that. I bought that for $120. Carrying case, $20. Originally, $60. Active pack, $30. Originally, $70. Fit pack, $20. Originally, $50. That's a significant discount on all of those. They are clearly trying to get rid of old stock, maybe, just maybe, preparing for the launch of a Quest 3S and preparing to launch those accessories. I don't see any other reason this may be happening. I mean, the Quest 2 is also staying at its lowered price of $199. To me, that's pretty clear. They're trying to get rid of old stock and uh, preparing to launch something new. So, seems like good news for the rest of us, waiting on them to launch something new, and also great news for anyone wanting to buy a accessories. I mean, wow. Emulators are now allowed on the Apple App Store, in case you guys are not in the loop on that, and with that also come emulators on the Apple Vision Pro. Delta Emulator brings Nintendo's Game Boy, DS, NES, SNES, and 64 to the Apple Vision Pro. So in case you guys aren't emulators, you can now emulate on the Apple Vision Pro. A wave of emulators is starting to roll out across Apple platforms, Vision Pro included, as Joy-Cons and other official gamepads prove useful in input accessories. Before Apple even publicly signal change to its App Store policies inviting this type of software onto its storefront, a limited run test flight started filling up on the Vision Pro for a Game Boy Advance emulator. Today, the wildly used Delta project launched across all current Apple devices with emulation for a wide range of Nintendo's decade-old gaming systems. Game Boy, DS, NES, SNES, and 64. Wherever possible, Nintendo and its licensees attempt to find ways to bring legitimate classics to current systems via virtual console titles for example. So that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I have played emulators and I have had videos on playing emulators on the Quest in the past, and we've been able to do this on the Quest for the longest time, just, you know, sideload an APK. And they all work fantastic. It's just really cool being able to see these classics on a massive screen floating in front of you. Just a completely different way of witnessing them. Emulating them on PC? That's one thing. Seeing the thing float in front of you in the real space? That's a whole different way of seeing the thing happen. And, you know, when you have it in 3D as well, when people are make it for virtual reality, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> it's great, I love nostalgia. A new Synth Riders mixtape is now out in case you play Synth Riders. 80s mixtape comes to the Vision Pro, Steam, and Quest 3. Synth Riders invites you to take on me with its 80s mixtape, launching this week across most VR headsets. Here's the full 80s mixtape going above me right now, and yeah, pretty cool. I really like Synth Riders in case you guys do too, we now have a new mixtape to play around with. And apparently very soon, when you demo the Apple Vision Pro, you will be able to witness your own spatial videos on there. I think this is a pretty sneaky tactic because I feel like seeing your own spatial videos show up on the Apple Vision Pro in front of you might honestly get you to buy the uh, device a little bit more than if you were to buy it looking at someone else's videos. Because it's something familiar, you know, you're gonna see something that you know and it's gonna feel a lot more real. I mean, I'd say it's probably gonna work. I don't know though. I still haven't gotten to try an Apple Vision Pro. It's not available here in Europe and bringing it down would cost an absolute fortune. 
Apple will soon allow its users to upload their own spatial videos to the Apple Vision Pro demo units in hopes to really drive home the headset's value proposition. There we go. This is exactly what I was on about. When it comes to plonking down $3.5,000 for the Vision Pro, seeing truly is believing. And anyone who wants to buy Apple's first mixed reality headset can sign up to an in-store demo. That is, anyone in the US, as the company still hasn't announced when it's launching the Vision Pro internationally. As reported by 9to5Mac, it was discovered in the iOS 17.5 Beta 2 software release that Apple will not only be serving up its regular slate of preloaded Apple Vision Pro spatial videos during its in-store demos, but will also allow users to upload their own content soon. So, in case you guys are planning to visit the Apple Store in America and check out the Vision Pro, make sure to bring your iPhone, if you have one with you, so that you can check out your own spatial videos. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night. If you guys like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess it works too. Let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord and our Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spice memes. And thank you so, so much to anyone supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. Thank you to the Patreons, people doing super thanks, people buying me a coffee. Seriously, guys, you are all amazing. And thank you to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified of future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe with forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace. Jest kit? Dlaczego? Tak? Nie no, bardzo ładnie zrobiony kawał, ale to się klei! <laughs> Okej, okay, to teraz złączamy, nie? Gdzie jest ta jedynka nasza? P1. Okej, okay. złączamy i sprawdzamy czy działa.